Well, this session has been extremely informative, and I've learned a lot today from each of you. Uh, before we end the discussion, I'd like to get closing thoughts uh, from uh, each of our panelists. Uh, Jay, why don't you start us off with uh, your thoughts on where we go from here? <clears throat> wow. So, I mean, I think in ALL, it's very, I think leukemia in general has been such an exciting field to be part of uh, for the last several years. There's been very new novel therapies is coming even within the same year, several of them. So, I mean, what I think, uh, what I'm anticipating or what I'm uh, excited about for the next uh, several years is use, incorporating this novel therapy that we discussed before, which some, a lot of which were immunotherapy for BALL, uh, targeting CD22, CD19, or we have, you know, the bi-specific car, we're targeting two antigens at the same time, are we going to get a better response? I think the challenges that we're going to have, which is a good challenge, good problem to have is that what is really the best way to combine this type of therapy into early in line, so if a setting that we can move the curve from the 60, in the 50 to 60 percent, cure 90 percent of what we want, I want to get what we will take. And in, the, in, in a way, the, what I really dream about is that Currently, ALL therapy is very long. It's about three years of a therapy for infection consolidation and maintenance. With this new therapy, do we really need that all three years? Wouldn't that be great if we get one induction and then get either CAR T or some other novel therapy? That's it. The higher risk patients, because they're MRD positive and getting this novel therapy, may actually need a shorter therapy because they can be done after maybe three months. Ideal situations, but I think that will make a huge difference of the patient's quality of life if we can maintain the prove it. So that's what I'm excited, hopefully we can see that and what I'm excited about. Well, thank you. Bijal, what are your thoughts? I have to echo what Jay said. I'm excited about moving novel agents forward. I'm especially excited about what we're generating in the CAR-T space. And I can absolutely envision a Blin induction followed by a CAR-T consolidation. I can envision randomized trials comparing CAR-T against allogeneic transplant. Uh, you know, I, I can envision all of these things because we're in an era where we recognize 50% ain't good enough. Um, we can do better. And we don't have to hammer and hammer and hammer away before we apply these novel therapies. And so I'm extremely excited about next generation sequencing based MRD approaches because they're going to allow us to move as we did with blenitumumab to my surprise as well, but uh, we're going to be able to move novel agents forward now using next-gen sequencing or other MRD-based approaches to guide the application of some of these therapeutic approaches, as Jay alluded to. We're going to get better at giving it. We're going to get better at targeting it. And I think in five to ten years, we're going to be talking about what's really just a novel novel as a backbone for ALL therapy for the first time. And, and we can get away from uh, discussions about, uh, you know, this backbone versus that backbone. Anthony. Yeah, I mean, I would like to see probably in the next five years is basically a regimen that avoids chemo, that is a chemo three, chemotherapy free regimen. And I think there's one trial. So I, the other point is, I mean, ALL is a relatively rare disease. So to make further advances, I think patients should be, tri should be put on clinical trials so that we can get an answer quicker and be able to move, so learn whether these novel agents can be moved into the upfront setting and hopefully one day have a chemotherapy-free regimen so we won't be looking at all the toxicities and from, uh, from chemotherapy. Yeah. I would, cert I would certainly echo that. I think of acute promyelocytic leukemia yeah. used to be one of the worst prognostic leukemias. Now we're not using traditional chemotherapy, and it's got a very good prognosis. One thing we haven't talked about a lot today is T-cell ALL, which I feel some sadness about in the, all the excitement with B-cell ALL. Um, Nalarabine may be moving into the front-line setting, but that's not going to be a major advance. There's some efforts with CAR-T therapy, with T-cell ALL, or some other novel agents, venetoclax, might move into that space. Uh, so I think there's hope with T-cell ALL, but we've got much more work to do to, to, uh, to get to that point with T-cell ALL. Yeah, no, I agree, echo that. I think T early, especially early T-cell ALL is a really an unmet need. And um, I think there are new novel agents that are being looked at, such as daratumumab uh, um, and then the other, uh, uh, the other one that you alluded to was basically venetoclax, 
plus Nevada Clux as a combination, and that trial is now ongoing. Well, thank you all for your contributions to this discussion. On behalf of our panel, we thank you for uh, joining us, and we hope that uh, you found this Enclave Peer Exchange to be useful and informative. Thank you. <laughs>